I'm gonna need therapy after this one because we got the pink sauce. We got it. Look at it. Doesn't it look? It looks legit. It doesn't Bro, even look. The, the word is not even like <laughs> sta staying on there. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Before I get sued, I just want to mention that I did not want to buy the original pink sauce. I didn't want to support it because I know that there's so much drama surrounding it. I found a copycat recipe of the pink sauce using the pink sauce's ingredient list, which I cannot even tell you how disgusting the process was. It was curdling. There was little bubbles of mayonnaise just popping up everywhere. I don't know how this baby is not refrigerated. I don't even know what it's going to taste like. There's going to be like no taste. So um, with that being said, I think that this is a very apt time to tell you that uh, thank you BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. <laughs> so okay, Dan, I have a legitimate question for you. The car that you have right now, the one that you're driving, mm. imagine that's your car for the rest of your life. It doesn't matter if it breaks down. It doesn't matter if you're a bajillionaire. That's your car for the rest of your life. Would you treat it differently? Would you be like, that's my baby now? What if I have like 500,000 mileage? Yeah, it doesn't matter. That's your car. Mm. You gotta get it serviced. You gotta pump gas. I mean, don't you think that if that was your car for the rest of your life, you would take way better care of it? Your brain is your engine, right? You need routine maintenance. You need to pump gas to keep it running. You need to show it some love. That's literally how our brains are. And I just want to say, I realized I needed to treat my brain better. After starting therapy, I realized how I treat my mind. And the more that I learn about how I think, the way that my life experience in this little game that we're doing, is so much more different and I've been investing a lot of time into taking care of my brain and if you guys want to be on the same boat as me because it just changes your life like my therapist and I she teaches me how to avoid negative thoughts she teaches me like what to tell myself when my brain automatically wants to be like you're screwed there's no way out this is the end of happiness so with BetterHelp Online Therapy, they can help with that. I love BetterHelp. Honestly, I love my therapist from BetterHelp. We've been working together for years now. I swear she's so good at asking me the right questions to get me thinking and noticing my patterns in my thinking. I have changed so much since I started therapy. I also love how convenient BetterHelp is. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat-only therapy sessions. So if you feel more comfortable not seeing someone on camera, they got you. It's also more affordable than in-person therapy. You just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs. You match with a therapist in under 48 hours and I truly cannot recommend it enough. You can even swap therapists if you're not vibing with your current one because listen, therapists are amazing, but sometimes you just need to find one that just clicks with you. And right now our listeners can get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Stephanie Sue. That's betterhelp.com slash Stephanie Sue to let them know that I sent you. And thank you BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. And let's get into the pink sauce. For the pink sauce, I think I need my pink gloves. We have also paired it with, why today I decided to wear a strapless bra with my wonderful, beautiful this merch. Oh. 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 <laughs> I just realized. I know, it's so cute. He thought it was like Louis Vuitton I thought it was like a something. uniform or something. But that collar is like part of it. Yeah, the collar is. It's not is, like a different shirt. Oh, it's, oh. it's a part of it. And it's so comfortable because normally I hate when you have to wear a collar inside because it just gets so stuffy. Oh, I thought it was like two. Oh, I know. It looks good, doesn't it? Looks it? good. It's not even out yet though. Oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> so uh, we've got a bunch of spicy chicken, chicken wings, chicken tenders, mm. onion rings, coleslaw, pickles. I'm just gonna go in with the pink sauce. I'm not even gonna... So is this just like mayo? I have no idea. I have no what did idea. you do? What, what's in there? You know what makes it pink? Can you guys take a guess? Strawberry. Whoa, 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 whoa. It just squirted. Wait, what? Let me just That's try it. Nasty. I thought it would be more gooey. Exactly. <laughs> Tastes like nothing. Okay. Really? I'm so confused. Here, then you wanna try? Mm -hmm. Watch out for the words. I'm confused. Maybe I need to try it with a mozzarella stick. I have some of the wateriness here, but it's gonna squirt. Oh my god, God. It's squirted. Here you go. Be careful of the words. You don't want to try it? That looks toxic. Then they grab the word. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is a different sauce. Let me try it. What's the taste? Oh, can we open the top and just dip it? Mm -hmm. Wait. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to explain it. It's not horrible, but it the way that it ships, all right, I'm about to dip it. It's that's, like that's mayo nasty. and water. Yeah. I don't know. It's not disgusting, but it's not great. It's, it's not, not a great disgusting. feeling. Yeah, it's not. But what's it's, in there? Can you tell us what's in there? Just it's all oil and mayo. 
Oil? What kind of oil? Oil. She used sunflower oil. I used avocado oil because I don't like sunflower oil. Guess what makes it pink? What's pink? Food color. Food color. Mm -mm. Dragon fruit. Dragon It's like the weirdest oh, concept of cool. a... Oh, but I think nice. beets would be better. How come I can't taste the dragon fruit? Yeah, I can't taste much. Very light, I think. Okay, this time I'm going to It's not to horrible, try. but it's not great. Yeah. It's like in the middle. And I would not recommend buying it from Ugh. the person that makes the pink sauce because there's mayonnaise, there's um milk that goes in there, and she ships it to you non-refrigerated, so... Bruh. Okay, I'm gonna try this. Do you know how much it is? I have no idea. <gasps> Ooh. Oh my god. I'm still trying to do the chicken wing hack. Oh, let me show you. Wow. You split the bones. This is so good. No, that's not a hack. Mmm, easy. You gotta break the side first. This is the saltiest lemon pepper I've ever had in my life. Is it the best ever? It's pretty good. No. <laughs> pretty good though. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Alright, okay. ready? I'm, I'm gonna tap it. Ready? Mm -hmm. See. Damn. Damn, look at you. Do you look like one of those uh, Game of Thrones at one of those feasts after killing someone, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> after one of the little gladiator duels. I'm not even getting that right. Gladiators, Did Game of Thrones. Did you watch the whole series? Yes, but he hated it. Oh. He said there's too much talking. <laughs> not enough news. <laughs> Dude, I, I watched the first episode. I, mm -hmm. I didn't watch the whole series. Mm -hmm. Just the first episode. Just to see what it's like. Mm -hmm. Dude, it's crazy, bro. Too much talking, right? And news. I was like, what the frick um, is this? Yeah, I could have used more nudity if I'm being honest with you. Like, they allowed us? Mm hmm. Wow, these onion wings are delicious. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna try a burger. These are supposedly, while well, the spicy chicken just sticks out of there, these are supposedly mm. super spicy chicken burgers. Okay? It's not that bad. Really? No. Mm. Okay. <laughs> it's not that bad at all. So we got the orange sauce, mm. we got the pink sauce. The orange sauce is good. It's well, not orange bad. Sauce is good. Yeah. Is this like hot buffalo? No, it's like their special sauce. We're Confession? talking about horror stories. Um, mm. Confession horror story? Yes. Wait, wait, what's the scariest thing that's ever happened to you? So it says I'll be late for school, right? Mm -hmm. But this is before I could drive or anything, so mm -hmm. I couldn't take a car. And this is before I had a debit card. Mm -hmm. Because I sometimes I paid Uber just to go to school. You take Uber to school? Oh, when I'm late, when I'm late. That's wow. so cool. But like, this is like freshman year. So I, I seriously did not want to get yelled at that morning. So I just decided to walk to school. I remember maybe like, I'm walking for like five minutes. Uh, a bit outside my neighborhood. And I just like, I hear like, r like steps behind me. But it's like running. It sounds like they were running towards me. So this is, I would say, a uh, 6.30ish. And I was just like, it's, kind, it's still dark out. So I was panicking. I'm like, oh, should I, should I just book it? Am I weird? What's going on? So I, I ran like almost, like, oh, I would say like about a whole block because I was just scared. And it was like, it was, there was no like, part of it was sidewalk, but majority of it was just grass. But I just ran for almost like a block because I was just scared. So who was it? Yeah. I have no clue. Why do I? All I see is like a silhouette in the dark running. Why do I imagine oh someone just chasing after him? Like, do you have time to talk about our Lord and Savior <laughs> Jesus Christ? Yeah. And they're just booking it. I got that so many times in college. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't think that's the best way to convince someone, right? Yeah, maybe not. Well, you know what's the best way to convince me, though? Mm. Mozzarella sticks. <laughs> I don't care what you're trying to sell me on. Give me free mozzarella sticks. I'm there. I'm showing up. Okay, this is the first tour story. Are you guys ready? Yes. Hey, Stephanie, I love you so much, and I'm gonna rant about almost dying on a vacation to Malaysia. <laughs> There's a happy emoji next to it, okay? <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, so to give you context, my mom, my sisters and I decided to go on an all-girls vacation with my aunt and her daughter to Kuala Lumpur and other places in Malaysia. I live in Pakistan, so the flight to Kuala Lumpur alone from Lahore is about six to seven hours. That's not bad. Now, fast forward to the day that we leave, and we're at the airport, and we almost missed our flight, but who cares anyways? We make it onto our plane, get seated, and then we're off, right? Mm -hmm. I was actually going into fifth grade when we got back, so I'm literally so young. I'm 16 now. Yeah, I know. We exist. 16-year-olds exist. I swear, this is kind of pertinent to the story. So I take a nap while we're on the plane with my mom next to me, and suddenly I wake up to the motherfucking plane shaking, and I get freaked the f 
fuck out because I was like 10, but like it stops and goes back to normal. So a lot of shaking, a lot of turbulence. Me being an annoying 10 year old decides to go sit next to my sister who had an empty seat next to her at the back. And they gave us food, but I didn't want to eat it because I get motion sick. And I'm just chilling next to my sister and the hostess comes and closes our window and everyone's like, well, why are you doing that, right? So she made up some like random excuse and I don't really remember. I'd be like, now I want to open my window because what is there you don't want me to see? So while this is all happening, there's a male flight attendant behind talking to his colleagues because remember, I went straight to the back and my fourth grader ass hears him say, the plane is being turned back to the city in Pakistan and we're already three hours into the plane ride. What? Mm. So what do I do? I'm 10. Of course I have to announce it to my sister and my family who proceeded to announce it to all the passengers. <laughs> I just imagine her telling her sister, her sister tells her mom, and then everyone is like, wait, what did you just say? That's and then they turn around on their seats and they're like, so she heard from the flight attendant who said... <laughs> and then it's like the game of telephone. And then the message is completely It's just completely lost. different. <laughs> the message is... We're going to America now. <laughs> it's so random, we're like stopping there for some reason. <laughs> wow. That was the end of the story? Oh no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, okay, I was like, what? Me just eating. Oh, I was so, I swear I have too much anxiety to even think about doing that now. But fourth grade, Elise was a bad bitch. So she starts going down and a flight attendant is trying to downplay it but my mom was done having it and made her talk and what she heard made her call my dad immediately okay. apparently we were currently on top of bangladesh turning around because our plane's fucking engine was broken and not maintained so that bitch was dying out which scared the shit out of everybody and caused a ruckus so they told us that we had to go back so we wouldn't die lmao See, this is what I love about 16 year olds, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, y'all be dying and then lmao -ing -o. <laughs> I get so amused talking to people that are younger than me because you will tell me the most traumatic shit that has ha happened in your life and you're like, lol, lmao. She said, so we wouldn't die, lmao. And then, I don't know, some professional people were trying to ask India to let us land at their airport, which we were close to, but they didn't let us. No offense to India, kisses. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fucking writing for me. So all of us were too stunned to speak. We're sitting inside this metal tube whose engine doesn't work and the plane kept on shaking like a TikToker shaking ass, which is traumatizing. <laughs> oh my God, the plane would randomly go straight down and then come back up. That made me want to cry. LMAO. <laughs> <laughs> my sister is hugging me and is on the phone with her best friend and goes, babe, if we die, no one's going to find our bones. <laughs> And I suddenly think it's funny. Fast forward to entering Pakistan and being there, Karachi, where everyone's just praying to get the fuck out of this plane. Mm. And the plane literally starts making broken robot <laughs> sounds and goes, <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's freaking out. And the pilot keeps on pushing to keep the plane plane upright every time it free falls. And we're just going, do grr, do grr, do grr. No way. I'm sorry, we're laughing, but I'm so scared of planes, I tell Holy. you. We reached the empty plane lot near the airport, and now we're going like that round and round circling because the plane wasn't stable and kept on making sounds like a really old car that's taking its last breath and screaming like a woman giving birth. So it was really, really, really loud. Finally, after 50 minutes of circling, the pilot lanes the plan, and I have never been happier to be on the ground. There was a literal ambulance ready for the pilot when she got out and had to be taken out on a stretcher. I can't imagine how traumatized she was after all of that, but she really did save our lives. Damn. Girl boss shit. <laughs> That's literally what she wrote. <laughs> and I heard that she retired after our flight. So we get out and get a call from my dad telling us he's booking us flights home, and we came back, but we were stubborn and insisted on going to Malaysia even after all of that, and we did. Later, my dad's friend, who was like an important person in that field, said the plane was literally so broken and the engine was basically dead. That wasn't even the most horrifying thing from that trip. But that's a start. Okay, I'm done. I love you and I watch you every day. Please give Sophia a hug for me. I love you, babies. <laughs> and she spelled Sophia right. I don't even spell Sophia right. Oh, yeah. Yes, wow. because I'm Stephanie with a PH, so I keep wanting to do Sophia with a PH. Also, question, if you were in a plane crash, do you think it's a free-for-all? Like, the plane crashes, mm -hmm. you need to get out before the whole thing blows. Are you pushing and shoving people? It's like Titanic, right? It's like Titanic. Ladies first? Women and children first? Mm -hmm. Oh! Mm. But I really think, though, mm -hmm. people in that plane will yeah. just go in a rampage. I think so, too. 
We were talking like about that's just human nature, man. Mm -hmm. What if that motherfucker in front of you, you're about to blow up? There's uh -huh. six ex exits, the uh -huh. closest one to you. You're so close. Uh -huh. That motherfucker overhead bin taken out his luggage. What would you do? Oh hell. What would no. you do? Would you just I, boom? I'll steal that luggage and throw oh it away. Oh my god. Bro, I would be so pissed. <laughs> I would just like smack him saying like, bro. Yes. Not the time. Not the time. Not the, go, go, Cause go. you know on a flight there's gonna be at least like five Karen's. <sighs> just statistically speaking, right? There's gonna be five people who are trying to fuck shit up, get their overhead oh. luggage. This one is titled The Red Shirt Man. Hello, hi. <laughs> Okay, that's really... So the horrifying experience that I was scared for my life, thinking that it might happen near our local community, started back when I was, I think it was my freshman year of high school, that there was this trend about how they got a leaked video from the dark web. It was lunchtime. We were in our classroom eating our food, and then one of my classmates, let's call him A, decided that we should watch a video. My friend group didn't mind, you know, because we were just in our own worlds gossiping, so as they were finished setting up their laptop to connect to a television above the blackboard, it got our attention when they started playing a video. The video was quite blurry, but in the video, there was this man in a red shirt walking deep into the forest, and it was daytime, while somebody was recording him. After that, it skipped to where the man was digging on the ground, a hole big enough that could fit him, but not too deep for a grave, while another man was in front of him watching. I can't understand what conversation that they were having, but the red shirt man seems fearful of the other man in front of him. We did not watch it thoroughly since we had limited lunch time, and A just forwards it to the red man sitting on the hole he dug that was big enough to fit him, conversing to the man recording. There started our fear as he points a gun at him, A skips it again to where the red man is now laying down on the hole and there stood right next to him the man with the machete and what happens next was something I can't stomach. I don't know why I still want to watch what's happening after that but what happened was the man holding a machete swung it to the red shirt man's neck and does it again and again until we can see that he is bleeding. The murderer even tried to skin him alive and the red shirt man seemed so vulnerable, he was not even tired, but he just lied down and the man swung the machete at him. What even horrified me was the murderer and the recorder, they were just laughing at the whole thing. So my classmates who were watching with us told A to stop the video already because it was making them sick. Why is A playing that? Bro, school? when you're in high school, there do be some kids that really are so weird. So I cannot even eat my lunch nor focus on my lessons after that. My mind was occupied with thoughts on who are these people, why did they do that, when did this happen, or perhaps where did it happen. I was scared with my own life that a that someone might happen, something like that might happen to us. And that's still not the end. After dismissal and after we got home, we have a group chat on where all of our classmates in our section were there. And A decided to send a full video of that video because some people might have missed it. I tried not to watch it again, but curiosity hits me and I watched it. It was such a bad idea. I skipped till the end part and the scene I accidentally skipped to etched permanently on my mind. The remains of the man was seen and the murderer was skinning off his arm and having a piece of flesh on his hands and waves it to the camera laughing. I exited the video as I cannot take it anymore and just watched something funny to help my mind wander a little bit. It helped but I still can't get rid of the feeling that a human can even do that. A few days later, I don't think this relates or if it's true, but I saw on Facebook that a man was missing and the video we watched was similar to the man who was killed in the video. It also seems like the man missing was not from our locality nor our country. I didn't research all of this because it traumatized me, even if let's say that is the man or the missing person. It's not in our country where it happened. From that day onwards, that opened my eyes to how a human can be more evil than the devil. That is some, <sighs> yeah, internet is scary. You know, oh my gosh, I was just thinking about that when we were on a plane. We were looking down and everywhere that you land typically, even if you, because we had gone to New York recently, and even if you land in New York, just the city view is nice, but the suburbs of New York is like everywhere. The houses are one by one next to each other. It's like a grid of mm. houses after houses after houses. Yep. And I'm looking at it and it's so fascinating because it's like humans are like ants. But at the same mm. time, how many of these houses are hiding something or hiding people in the basement in the backyard inside the house tied up like it just was freaking me out because it's a numbers game statistically right i mean yeah. if i'm looking at this many houses there's got to be some houses mm, at least one that have something really horrible going on inside 
but this is so much worse. I don't even know what to say. I can't even comfort you. Yeah, I think that's a huge moment. I feel like everybody has a moment, maybe not this extreme, where you realize that people are so bad. The next one. About two weeks ago, I was very sick and I had to eat honey with lemon to lessen the sting in my throat. As I was eating, I swallowed wrong and started choking. At first, I thought it was a five second choking, but then I started gasping and crying and I couldn't even drink the water that was in my hand because I was afraid of choking more. As this all happened, also, wow, you're getting like straight to the point, okay? <laughs> as this happened, my mom was right in front of me staring at me I was, as I was suffocating and she turned to look back at the TV as I continued to cry. So, so she's choking and crying and she just doesn't care and looking. she's looking at the TV? Yeah. 10 minutes what later, she of? tells me a way to stop choking and I didn't know how to feel because she wasn't helping me earlier as I was choking and choking. Wow. This would be a really good TV show, huh? <laughs> Honey. I'm kidding, obviously. Yeah. But I mean. that's crazy. You know what I always think about? What? Okay, imagine you're on the brink of death and you're not gonna die. But maybe people think you are. Do you think that there's gonna be anyone in your life that just looks at you and then looks away? Holy sh I think about that sometimes. Not, Not a lot. Yeah. It. Think about it. Cause you would imagine that most people would be like, oh my god, let me save you, right? But do you imagine that there's just that one person who looks at you, realizes like nobody chuckles? else is around, and they just walk off? That's I evil. hope I don't know anybody right? like that. And like then imagine at your funeral they're gonna be the one crying the most. Yeah. Like you live after that, but yeah. you, 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 you experience exactly. that. Like you'll be, I'll be traumatized. Me too. Okay, this is a long and a sad one, so be mentally prepared. Sorry. Don't be sorry, what the heck? I was the new girl to the city. I didn't have anyone or anything but my family. Don't get me wrong, I had been there before and I knew my way around town. I started school there, met some people. I'm not quite sure if they're the wrong people to be around or if I was just too gullible and too desperate in the moment. They invited me and my new friend to a big party. It was like the party of the year, in fact, because what happened next was unforgettable. At least for me it was. I've never consumed a drop of alcohol until that night. It wasn't the pressure I'd like to think I was looking for validation, you know? Mm -hmm. I wanted to be accepted. So every drink that was offered, I took it. Every blunt that I was offered, I smoked it, and the last thing I remember was before I was blacked out, sitting on the couch, looking at a mirror beside me and saying to myself, you're gonna be okay. Oh my God, that's gonna make me cry because I used to do that too. Not in this exact setting, but like when I was really going through it, I would say that too. <sighs> okay, stop. I don't know why I said that to myself, or at least I didn't in that moment. I remember very little snippets of what happened, but I think my mind just really forced itself to forget the parts I didn't wanna remember. I woke up the next morning and I was still at that house. Remember that friend that I came with? They left me there, asleep, with people I didn't know. Stephanie, what happened to me was the hardest part of my fucked up childhood. No. A couple of videos of me being drunk were taken and were going around, but that's not the worst part. The worst part was learning from people you don't know that you're not even a virgin anymore. And it broke my heart. Nobody helped me or even acknowledged the fact that I was an underage drunk girl basically getting dragged into a room with a 20 year old guy. I never spoke about it, not until now. I wanted everyone to forget what happened to me, including myself, because I didn't want to be known as the new girl who got raped at a party. And for a really long time, that's how a lot of people started describing me as. I became aggressive not long after that. I started thinking everyone was crazy, even myself. I just couldn't believe what happened. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat. I just didn't want to be home. It didn't feel like home after that. I started becoming more aggressive. Let's just say, after that day, my whole demeanor changed. Nobody forgot about it, they just brought it up less. I guess we could say I just, I made sure I gave them other things to talk about. We left that city, moved to a different state, and I never got real justice for what I went through, and I'm convinced I never will. Although we left the pain, the trauma and hurt has always stayed with me. I've learned to control and manage it, but I'd be lying if I said I don't constantly worry about my daughter's future. She's three now, and I'm a lot happier now that I'm not reminded of it everywhere I look. I thought I'd share to let others know that it's okay. It's all gonna be okay, you're gonna be okay. Oh no! <laughs> Had I let everything and everyone get to me back then, I probably wouldn't be here now. What I went through made me the strongest version of myself, and I'm proud of me and everyone just like me. We're gonna be okay, bits. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna be really dark. 
I know what you mean though. I'm really scared for my nieces too. And I'm sure it's worse for like when it's your own kid. But like these days after my nieces were born, when I do cases like this, I get like more scared. Cause it's not just like me. I'm like thinking about Sophie when she gets like even 13. I'm like, oh my God, am I gonna be a crazy aunt like calling her every weekend? I'm so sorry you went through that, but I'm so proud of you. If that means anything, I love you. Nice one. Next one. We were on our way back from New York to Massachusetts, and there's this huge ass storm that was literally sweeping cars off the highway. I'm not even joking. This was like six years ago, so I'm eight or nine. And my brother was not helping. Like this dude just kept saying, we lived a good life. Like, bro, what is wrong with this guy? So my parents were so freaking stubborn. Like, dudes, car, like, dude, cars are literally being blown off the road. The highway looks like the shallow end of the pool. The wind is whistling and you're literally struggling to stay in the middle of the lane because we're being pushed to the side and you guys want to keep driving? So they finally decide to stop at a, Mar at a McDonald's or a Burger King because I had the nervous shits. <laughs> Why is that so relatable? So I'm blowing it up in the toilet. An old ass woman comes in with her young sneaky link. I only saw because of the huge ass cracks the US bathroom stalls have. Dude, the lady looked like she was in her 50s and the guy was fresh out of high school like this dude could have been her son. And I'm sure you know where this is heading. They go into the big stall at the back. Where are they heading? I have no idea where this is heading. Oh yeah, bathroom? spicy hormone sandwich. Oh. Uh, what? So uh, they go to the big stall at the back. I'm in the second, so they're like three stalls away from me. And I kid you not, one of them threw the lady's underwear and it landed in my fucking stall. What? <laughs> 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 threw the underwear! Threw her panties! No. It was this. It was no. <laughs> like, imagine you're just pooping in a McDonald's and an underwear lands on your head. No. <laughs> What would you do? What would you do? Would you throw it back? I'll probably throw it back and be like, <laughs> I'm gonna throw mine back. <laughs> what are you doing? It's an undie swap. I get up, go outside the stall door, and start pissing over it. I, I was gonna say something similar <laughs> of what I thought Wei Wei would do. Uh -huh. You wanna throw your underwear? I'm gonna throw my shit. <laughs> I thought he was gonna you know, say something like that. Or, or you can wipe your ass and throw it. Oh, that's a good one. That's yeah, actually that's good. <laughs> Wait. It was this thin ass string of red lace, but get it, I guess. I still don't understand how that could have been comfortable because the lace looks so crispy, but I don't know, whatever. The two start fucking hella loud. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just in yeah. my stall, bawling my eyes out with <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> like the squeaky kind so the two stopped doing it for like 10 seconds <laughs> until i heard the dude mutter damn i love your fat <laughs> <laughs> what oh that was uh... he's getting how a big mac if, she, if she's <laughs> blowing up the toilet <laughs> how those two those two yeah. smell <laughs> they don't care man they don't care and I assume they thought that she queefed and it wasn't my fart. <laughs> Bro. I could say the two finished, literally, and then left. But the worst thing was, I heard the lady orgasm. Oh! And the dude said, all over the walls. So, <laughs> I feel bad for the janitor. My stomach finally calmed down 10 minutes-ish after and we went back on the road, which was still wet but the storm cleared. Anyways, I love you so much. You've helped me a lot through these last three years. <laughs> what would you guys do? Like in that situation? Bro, I would, I would literally just go <laughs> and then just stay right there. I, like I would like to sit here and be like, fling it back, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> next one. So I had a really abusive ex. He mm -hmm. was mentally and physically abusive. He would do things like put bait. Oh. What, what, what? He would do things like put baby frogs in a bottle and blow them up with firecrackers. What? Purposefully try and run over innocent animals in the road, and one time he even planned to kill a dog and eat it. What? You're like giving All me indigestion. 
He never went through it through with it though, I think. Anyway, on a particularly bad day, he was driving me home and my dog was out of the gate when we were pulling up. My ex started to speed down the street once I started to worry about my dog being out and I begged him to stop but he kept going. I closed my eyes so tight because I didn't want to see my dog get run over. What? Luckily, my, do my dog had moved out of the way just in time. My ex laughed in my face because he thought it was funny. He knew how much this dog meant to me. It was my deceased father's pet that was passed down to me. It was just another way to get at me mentally. It broke me. From then on, I made sure he would be safer. As time passed along, my ex would continue to make comments about my dog and how stupid he was and that he wished he was dead. We had tons of issues in between and I couldn't take it anymore. As scared as I was of him, I had to go before he did something to my dog. I didn't care if he hurt me, just don't fuck with my best friend. I left him in mid-January of 2019. I felt so relieved. I just could be at peace with my dog now. And in March of late, in, in March of 2019, my dog went missing. At first, I thought he had run away. So I searched all over the town, but he was gone. Mm -hmm. I cried my eyes out so much, my heart was shattered. He was my best friend, my protector through all my hardships. I couldn't believe I just let him slip away like that. One night, as I laid in bed grieving my loss, it occurred to me all the sh** that my ex had said about my dog, what he tried to do to him, everything just flooded and it made so much sense. I never had the guts to confront him. I'm terrified of that man and what could have been the harsh reality of where my dog went. My dog had always growled, barked, and snarled at my ex. He protected me. My dog would get in between me and him all the time. I should have listened to him sooner. Now I face the consequences of losing what was part of me. My sweet friend and protector, Canelo. <sighs> Hey. I mean, you know, dogs' but, intentions are real. Oh, you know, I only knew one person. I've talked about this before. Mm. One person that Mango has hated more than anyone in this world. Who was? I can't name him, but I really did not like this person. And Mango hated this person. I have never seen Mango like that. She would get down onto the ground. Mm -hmm. Like she would lower herself onto the ground and just growl anytime he was even near her. And it made me so uncomfortable because I couldn't help but thinking like, when I went to the bathroom, did he do something to my dog? Like, did something happen to my dog? And Mango is the type, if you accidentally step on her paw, she's not gonna hold yeah, a grudge. she doesn't do that. She doesn't care. She might yelp and then forgive you, but she's not gonna do all of that. Mm -hmm. She usually just walks away. Yeah, is that not unsettling? And he made it very clear he hates dogs. Like he's one of those people that's like, I hate dogs, I hate dogs. And you're like, geez, what's wrong with you? I don't know. If he did something to Mango, yeah. maybe maybe Mango just felt that like aura. Yeah. You know, that negative aura. And for a while after that, she was pretty skeptical around guys. Oh, but they... Oh, Mango now she's them. like back to normal. Oh. But like immediately... Do you remember? Even like mm -hmm. Andrea once in a while, she'd be a little skeptical of him. It was mm -hmm. weird. So this may not be as horrifying to read, but it was very horrifying for my nine-year-old self. I was born with eczema and started seeing a dermatologist when it started getting bad. They prescribed me a bunch of medications, but none of them were working. So I was recommended to take a bleach bath. Oh, I heard about this. Yeah, you actually put some bleach into the bath, like real bleach. What? Yeah. Is that bad for your skin? I read about it when we were um, trying to figure out what to do about uh, Sophie's eczema. Is that a real yeah. remedy? Yeah. It's legit? Legit. But it did not work for me completely. I got what looked like big blisters all over my body, which were filled with pus and would pop all night. Oh, oh my gosh. This is hitting close because my sister has eczema. I would have to dab at my blisters with toilet paper to clean up the pus. I was so itchy and I was in pain. I couldn't bend or straighten my legs normally because of the affected area behind my knees. Oh, I know. I heard the knees, the elbows. Yeah, They're the most, yeah, like itchy in the neck. Oh my gosh. My mom bought a million different kinds of lotions and all of them would sting and burn on my skin and I was, I was crying and my mom was so stressed. She would smother me with one lotion that wouldn't hurt on me every day. The feeling of lotion underneath your clothes causing them to stick, like, to stick to you like sweat does is honestly disgusting and it's worse than being drenched in sweat. I couldn't sleep well because of all I could think about was how I was getting my sheets and clothes covered in lotion. Thankfully, this happened during the summer and not during the school year. I had to take two weeks off all my summer classes because it was that bad. When I went back to the dermatologist, she was absent and it was her assistant who helped me. I was told to take an oatmeal bath. What is it with all these baths? And it recovered my skin almost back to normal. I still have pictures of my skin from that year and I can't even look at them because I'm so traumatized. Bro. That's like what your sister went through. We talk right? about this all the time. 
that not enough people talk about eczema. Eczema is so you. common. Yes, it's so common and it's so debilitating. And if you have supreme, like, uh, extreme cases of it, yeah, like it really fucks with people's self esteem. Yeah, because it messes up not only your, your appearance, face, yeah. but your mental too. Because it's yes. so itchy, right? Yes. Yeah, not only that, but. You also, you look different now. Yeah. So, like, my sister, it's gotten so much better now because she's got a system. But when she was younger, yeah. she used to be so sad because her face would be so dry that if she put even the tiniest bit of makeup, mm -hmm. it looked like it was peeling. Mm. You know, so it's, like, really sad for girls because it's, like, everybody expects you to wear this much makeup and everybody looks tell, so pretty when they wear makeup. And yeah. then tell them about the itching part. Like, what? I, I, oh I, rem God. I remember some memories. Yeah. When, you say whenever she's trying to itch, like your mom don't oh even my know God. how to, what to, like... Yeah, it's miserable because she's so itchy, right? Mm -hmm. What do you say? Don't itch, but... Because when you itch, it makes it worse. Right. It makes it redder and drier and sometimes it bleeds. Right. they can't help it. Exactly, so you don't even know what to say. So you're just like watching as they're in pain. And it's not even like a, oh, I have an itchy spot, right? It's almost like this, like... It's gonna drive you crazy unless you you can't even think straight. You can't even study because you need to itch it. And the fact that this is almost like a lifelong yes thing that you, there's no cure. But I think Cindy got a lot better. It's only made it, nice. But yeah. she still has um. Oh, what is it called? It's gotten so much better because she takes these shots. Guess how much her insurance wants her to pay for these shots? She's covered right now, but in three months she's not gonna be covered, and they want her to pay three thousand dollars a month. It's the only thing so far that has helped with her eczema. So it flare up. Yeah. Every it could happen like a few times a year. You just get crazy. Summer months. Summer months, yeah. and then it, it, it's insane. So those shots are the ones that's like controlling. Yeah. Right now she's gotten so like we have never seen her. Yeah. That's like a rent. Yeah. In a good. Yeah. So pretty good imagine apartment. Imagine how many people can afford that. Yeah. I my sister said Bro. she's not gonna get it. Yeah. So After, it's like yeah. what is she gonna do then? She yeah. just have to suffer. So that's the thing. Yeah. It's like eczema. It's like it's Crazy. not like one of those those disease people. Like oh no, you have this. So it's but it truly impacts people's life. It's not even something you get sick and you recover. It's your life now. And people think it's you know? not a. I'm so passionate about this. You don't even understand. Yeah. And people think it's not that serious because like, the also, concept. I have a family friend. Yes, I have a yes. family friend. Right? She can't eat garlic, onions, gluten, most forms of meat, a lot of different fruits. She literally, her mom, can't even bite frozen egg rolls or frozen dumplings. Everything has to be made from yeah. scratch. So she time, can't eat out. Last time we had the uh, yeah. party, she was here. She was here. She yeah, didn't remember. eat anything. Yeah. She couldn't eat anything. Like any of these food, anything will trigger her. Mm -hmm. And people don't take it seriously because most people have this idea of like, just don't itch it. Like, it's an itching disease, it's not that bad. Like, no. I can withstand itching, so can you. Anyway, that's my eczema rant, okay? I get really mad when people downplay eczema. Next one. This is a crazy f***ing story. Plot twist and everything. So maybe three years ago, I was walking home from school. I had just gotten out of soccer practice, and it was at the time when it was getting dark really early. Getting home takes about 20 plus minutes. I was walking, and the entire time I felt like someone was watching me. It was what? just me and another person, so I thought it was just that. And I was being paranoid. Let's call him Alex. Mm -hmm. Alex was an average height, maybe 5'8". He was taller than me though, I'm 5'4". It was just me and Alex. He was going the opposite way after maybe 5 minutes. It's nothing new. His house is on the opposite side. We aren't friends or anything, we're just classmates. I'm minding my own business, listening to music. Our neighborhood isn't necessarily bad or scary. It's just a normal neighborhood. It's quiet and everyone minds their own business and I've always, I've always been feeling a bit uneasy for the past couple of weeks walking home. So I just thought that I was overreacting. So I moved on. So Alex left and it was just me now. It was a bit dark but not pitch black. I was about 17 minutes away from home and saw a red light. I swear it was a camera. I looked and I got sc so scared but just thought it was nothing. I kept seeing that dot, and of course I thought it was a camera. But I'm an overthinker, so I thought it was that, right? And at the time, I was trying to stop overthinking so much, so I just kept moving. I now, I was now maybe 12 minutes away, and I saw someone. It was Alex. So I got relieved, just because I wasn't alone anymore. So I went up to him to feel some sort of comfort, and I just said hi. We talked a bit, and he was being weird. He was kind of nervous, but throughout the conversation, he kept changing tones to a bit more serious tone, less shy. He was a bit weird. Not in a mean way, he was just odd. 
We didn't talk much though, so I tried not to judge him. Minutes passed and it was pretty much fully dark, but you could still see the road. Alex said he was going to tie his shoe really quickly and I got on my phone for a second. Just one second and then Alex tried fucking hitting me. And at one point tried to put a towel over my mouth. I resisted, so only got a little bit up close. I forgot what it was called, but it's the stuff murderers use to put people to sleep. Chloroform? Oh. Chloroform. Luckily, I had my taser. My sister gave it to me for my birthday. She has an online store that she has some left over. I had no idea how to use it, since surprisingly, it was my first time almost being killed. So I tased him and he fell down. And let me tell you, girl, I held that button for a bit too long. <laughs> <laughs> I almost feel a little bit bad, but him a couple days passed and i found out alex the one that tried to kill me not only knew my ex-boyfriend but they were best fucking friends oh god i never even knew that and me and my ex-boyfriend dated for a couple of years another plot twist alex was the one that broke me and my boyfriend's relationship up he liked me and when i didn't date him when i didn't date alex after me and my boyfriend broke up he got mad and so he did what any normal person would do which is try and fucking kill me oh, smiley god. face now me and my ex-boyfriend who is now my current boyfriend again, started dating and we are happily married. Just kidding. It's been three years and Alex went to rehab for a year or two. He also abused drugs, which is another factor of why he did this. He may be sober now, which is what I heard, but he still sends letters to me in my boyfriend's house. Wait, he went to rehab? Yeah. He should be going to like prison. Yeah. He tried to kill her. Yeah, yeah but then the police are like, but did he kill you? No. Was so. he a juvenile? Probably. It seems like they're in high school, right? Yeah, I'm like, if you want to do that at 16, I can only imagine what you're going to do at 25, bruh. Yeah, telling us that we're shit people, telling us we ruined his life. Me and my boyfriend are happy now and moved in together. Moral of the story, I don't know. Make one up for me. Okay, let's take turns. <laughs> okay. You go first. Trust nobody. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's way ways. Should have held that taser longer. <laughs> <laughs> Always have self-awareness. What was yours? I don't know, I was gonna say something like, moral of the story, Alex is a red flag name, bruh. <laughs> it's a red flag. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, my friend solved a missing person case from sucking dick at a nightclub. <laughs> wow! Hey, at least it's dark in there, right? Hey, at least that's, you're being productive. Listen, I sucked dick and got nothing good out of it, so. Wait, what? This is amazing news, okay? So my friend was at a nightclub in Europe, living her best life, sucking mm. some D in the nightclub stall. <laughs> Whoa, Europe does it different. They have stalls? Okay. Bathroom stalls. No. Oh, that makes sense. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I was thinking they have like dick stalls. I don't know. Uh, possibly. <laughs> possibly. Europe knows? is wild. They do some crazy stuff. Life is good or whatever until she wakes up the next day. Her throat is killing her. This is the worst pain she's ever felt. My friend ends up going to the doctors and they told her that she... What? 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 Uh, she went to the doctor. I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because I'm so ridiculously confused right now. She, the doctors told her that she had a dead human corpse in her throat. From, and she got it from the D? <laughs> I know. What the fuck? Well, basically, they found out that the guy she sucked the D of had been keeping two dead bodies in his bedroom. Like a Ted Bundy type of... Wow. The body had been dead for a while and started decomposing. As the body was decomposing, he would fuck the dead bodies. So whatever bacteria and gunk from the dead bodies would get all over his dick. And that's how my friend ended up with dead corpse in her throat. Oh my the two God. dead bodies were two missing girls and no one ever knew what happened till now. Who knew sucking dick could solve murder, huh? So, she, I mean, she's a hero. <laughs> <laughs> she's a hero. Wow. Okay, did something happen to her throat, though? I mean, I, I think maybe they cleaned her up, gave her some strong antibiotics, I'm hoping. But the trauma of that, but also yeah. maybe not the trauma. Maybe it's a flex. Maybe you put that in your future dating profile. I don't know I don't how I would I feel. feel. guilty. I would feel traumatized. Yeah. A lot of emotions. Yeah, and then I would also feel very scared. Me just like gaslighting your friend into feeling scared when she probably feels like a hero. Okay, listen, I feel so paranoid because how could I not have seen it? I'm at the nightclub with this guy. I didn't even know he was a killer. Mm -hmm. I just like, thought he was chill. <laughs> I mean, how would she know though? Exactly, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the creepy part. You never know. Yeah. And then you would start second guessing yourself. Well, I still get shivers when I think about it and it makes me cry. This story goes back years ago when I was only seven years old. My parents hired a male home teacher to teach us how to read our holy book. I was too young back then to realize that my teacher was molesting me. 
I had my female hormones hit me very early and I had started developing breasts super early than most girls and they were tiny. My teacher used to grope me and fondle them and I used to just look at him with confusion. I never told my mom this because I didn't know what it was. My mom was very naive and trusted that religious people are always behaved and proper. Years went by. Have you guys seen that TikTok? Do you trust your kid with a pastor or with a drag queen? Drag queen. Drag queen every day. Drag queen. All day, every Bro, day. I don't I just don't trust like I don't know. Yeah, I think I just don't trust people with authority to begin with. And religious or not. I'm like, I don't know, politician, religious person, anyone who has like automatic authority, I'm like, what's going on? Okay, years went by and I later got to know what really happened to me. And I cried. I cried a lot. I cried and I cried and I felt disgusted with myself. I developed very bad phobia for men in my teens. I still never told my mom or anyone actually. My mom always gave her best for us. She passed away a few years ago and I'm happy I never told her because I always knew she was sick and later we got to know that she had cancer but kept quiet because she knew that we were struggling financially. Please don't hate on my mom. I'm not hating on your mom. The only person we should be hating on is not your mom. It's not the, you know, it's not you. I mean, it's the dude, yeah, the dude. whatever his name is, if he's a pastor, a minister, whatever. My mom was the best gift God ever gave me. I just wish that mother dies a gruesome death. Me too, and you know what? I'm gonna pray on it. I don't pray a lot, but I'll pray on that one. So this story is not paranormal at all, but it was the scariest day of my life. This is about the time I almost died and you will be dumbfounded at the cause. Do you know those grandma candies that are hard and have strawberry packaging? <laughs> yes. Do you know what I'm talking about? The, the the cover is strawberry, right? Yes! Dude, I freaking love those. I freaking the love those. The inside has a juice. Yes, juicy. Or not juice, juice. But it's like very sticky. Oh, heck yes. I wouldn't say it's like caramel consistency, but it's kind of the mixture of a hard candy and a caramel. It gets really sticky at the end, and the, you have to like do this Because <laughs> yeah. they like stick, yeah, because the juice or something. That was my, one of my favorites. Yes. Yeah, well that strawberry candy almost made me lose my life. Why? It was two years ago. I wasn't feeling hungry and just wanted something sweet. My mom bought some hard candy because she enjoys it and I took one. See, I love those strawberry candies. Always have. But this one time, the candy must have had it out for me, I swear to God. So I was sitting on the couch on my phone, not laying down by the way, and I had the candy on the side of my cheek. I don't know what happened to be honest, but all I know is that the candy flew down my throat and just lodged in there. I thought I could cough it out or something, but the piece of with such a big piece of candy, I ran into my room trying to hack it out any way that I could and I just couldn't breathe. It hurt to suck in or let out any air because I could feel the candy moving in my throat. I was shaking because I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to face my family. I know, that's dumb. I walked nonchalantly to the kitchen to get water and the water would not go down my throat so all the water just slipped out of my mouth. Can I just say what? something? This is like, this must be a young thing because when I was younger, I hated when I would accidentally have like food stuck in my throat. Mm -hmm. I like refused to cough in front of my family. I thought it Why? was so good. Like now I will, I'll, th I'll throw a fit. I'll be like, oh my God, I'm choking, right? But back then I, I hated it. So I'd go, <clears throat> and I would try to swallow it. You know what I mean? Do you know what I'm talking about? When you're younger, you just don't wanna, it's like embarrassing. Like, no, and then your mom is gonna like baby you. Oh my God, can you know? Oh. And then you're like, yes, yeah, stop. Doing this, it's like embarrassing. That's not what I got. I would you get? I got a good beating. Like, why you eat like that? Yeah, why are you so useless? Like, <laughs> oh, can't even freaking eat a fish, fish bone. bone. <laughs> yeah, oh, I got dying. It's like sad because he's laughing, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I don't want to laugh. No, no, me too. My eyes started watering because I really thought I was going to die then and there. So I didn't see who helped me. All I knew was that the candy was not lodged inside of me anymore and I wasn't dead. Mm -hmm. Turns out my mom gave me the Heimlich maneuver and my sister stood there filming me, struggling for my life. I have three sisters and none of them even tried to help. My older sister just stood there like this. You know oh, the emoji? That's like the other story. And the other one just laughed. My little sister was the one filming me and thought it was a whole comedic act. I got made fun of about that day, but my family, every single time we see that candy, they have to bring it up. Now, I don't even touch hard candy without any fear, nor do I trust my family to ever help me if I'm in a dire situation. Anyway, love you, Stephanie. <laughs> it's always the abrupt. Anyway, love you, that's how I died. <laughs> so, see you later. But I'm good, you know. <laughs> it's very much Gen Z LMAO. <laughs> Like, do you guys talk to your therapist like that? <laughs> I just want to know. Because <laughs> that's pretty good.
I just graduated med school and I will share a few of my experiences. During first year in our anatomy class, my naive ass was sitting in the dissection hall where cadavers are there, of course. I had no idea what was gonna happen, but as the class starts, our professor told everybody to look at the back and there were three cadavers just laying behind us and he cut open the bodies and the most horrifying part is that he cut off the thingies as if it was a vegetable or something. Plus, there was this big container where it was just limbs submerged in formulin. And he just casually started handing out limbs to us when the class started. And as the class goes on, he took out the intestines where there was still feces, of course, and he emptied the intestines right in front of my table. Wow. Not just that. The same professor used to teach us about human organs, and we would have to touch every single organ holding it. And he never allowed us to use gloves. I use gloves for pink sauce. <laughs> oh, yes. You touch somebody's intestines, you touched human tripe, and they didn't let you get gloves. Yo. But we get used to it, and we just hang out eating lunch in the dissection room now, right next to the cadavers. I wonder how it feels like. That's just some medical school things. Yeah. They just gotta go through that, I guess. They just get so yeah. used to blood and... No, yeah, tell, tell, tell us really about like your sister's like stabbing. Oh yeah, my sister and so her a, pharmacy Cindy class. Cindy is a pharmacist? They just have to stab each other with empty needles. Empty needle? Because they have to yeah. practice giving vaccines. So they just stab like needles onto each other and yeah. not on themselves. No and way. Cindy can do stab needle into herself. And yeah. So you get used to it. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Because you know most people have a fear of needle. I don't like to look at needle going into that is people's true. body. Like. It is scary. I, I feel like your sister doesn't have a no fear. Like I have no fear. Yeah. Like for real. She's like a like tough. Mm -hmm. She's pretty tough. She's very scary. <laughs> 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 oh, and then in Navy SEAL training, these are like the special ops. What they would do is they would um, get goats and just blow them up in front of you. Why goats? Like just animals, farm animals, oh. and just blow them up in front of you so that you get used to seeing like guts and organs fly everywhere. Oh my god. Because imagine it's your first time seeing it in the middle of like a covert operation where it literally is life or death You're and you panic. just start panicking, yeah. you know? There was also like, um, it's because a killer that we researched, um, he was part of the Navy SEAL. Anyway, they said that they would, they had a helicopter and they essentially like threw goats into the blades and the goats were like chopped up, but they were still kind of alive. So they forced all of the Navy SEALs in training to go save the goats. And they had med, like med equipment and everything, but at the end, none of the goats survived. And that was kind of the whole point. Sometimes you're gonna go in and try to save lives and nobody's gonna survive and you're just gonna be covered in guts. Yeah. They said that they also have really good um, like Hollywood CGI does not compare to the fake blood and fake props that the, the military training can do. So they'll have like your best friend and it looks like his leg just got blown up. And you have to go in and like visually, they said even though you know it's not true, visually, yeah. Imagine, imagine medics. Yeah, oh yeah, mm. the trauma of medics. Like ambulance medics, paramedics, ambulance drivers. Like wow. first at the scene and you know, most ambulances, it's like traumatic. It's not like the person can take themselves to the mm -hmm. hospital. So all you're seeing is trauma. <sighs> well, shout out to our paramedics, our ambulance drivers, our 911 dispatch. <laughs> shout out, she said. <laughs> <laughs> like that's gonna do anything, somebody. LMAO. <laughs> LMAO. <laughs> well, go LMAO to your therapist. <laughs> Tell them all your deepest, darkest fears, LMAO. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's mukbang. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Make sure to check out BetterHelp. Bye.